Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to finish up our talk about the driving forces and reactions by uh, talking about the final one uh, that we're going to talk about, oxidation reduction reactions. Oxidation reaction reactions are a giant part of chemistry. And uh, if you plan to go on in chemistry, you definitely want to go more than this lesson. I'm, I'm, this, is, this is very much just the tip of the iceberg. Um, what we'll do is we'll introduce what an oxidation reduction or a redox reaction is. And then uh, we'll uh, go over a couple examples of that. And we'll show you how you uh, can deal with the transfer of electrons in ionic compounds and covalent compounds. And hence, we'll introduce a topic called the oxidation number. Uh, but again, this is a, this is a big topic in chemistry. Um, something that I, I probably don't do justice to in, in one 10 minute video. So uh, feel free to um, see some of the other resources out there about redox reactions to learn a little bit more about it. Even how you can uh, balance equations using redox reactions a different way besides trial and error. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, these are often called redox reactions instead of oxidation reduction. Um, and again, these are, these are going to involve a, a, a transfer of electrons. And remember that that's going to be a driving force because if we're transferring electrons, we're probably making uh, full valence shells and, and that's a stable thing. So, uh, you know, if you see this happening, then, then you've got a reaction that's probably going to take place. Now we've got some vocabulary. Uh, when an atom loses electrons, it's considered to be oxidized. Um, often because I guess when, when atoms would react with oxygen, uh, they would be losing ox electrons to oxygen. Uh, but oxygen does not have to be involved at all in a reaction for something to be oxidized. Um, so again, sort of an unfortunate term. Um, but the other term isn't that much better. Uh, if atoms gain electrons, they're considered reduced. And I, I assume that means that the, uh, the charge gets uh, lowered. You know, so uh, if you're gaining electrons, you're going from like a zero to like a negative one or a negative two charge. And so neither term is, is that ideal, but nonetheless, we're sort of stuck with them. So again, lose electrons, oxidize, gain electrons, reduced. Um, I wish there was some way I could, I could remember that. Oh, Kembot, that's a, that's a good idea right there. Uh, so you can use an acronym that I, I certainly didn't make up. Uh, but it's it's probably one of the best acronyms out there. I'd say uh, next to uh, Roy G. Biv, I think Leo Gur is going to um, really really stack up against the best of the um, acronyms. And that's the idea of lose electrons, oxidized, gain electrons, reduced. Leo Gur. Leo's a lion, and lions go Gur. So feel free to use that. I think it's a great way to remember this. Now. Um, if, if you, uh, you, we can look at this from two points of view. You can look at it from the elements being oxidized, reduced, or the elements doing the oxidation reduction. So the oxidizing agent, as, as you may suspect, is the one doing the oxidizing. Um, just like the cleaning agent is the one doing the cleaning, it doesn't get cleaned. Um, the reducing agent is the same way. So you've got elements being oxidized, elements being reduced, and then you've got uh, oxidizing agents and reducing agents. And if they're in the same reaction, the reducing agent is probably being oxidized and the oxidizing agent is probably being reduced, but um, we'll, we'll look at a couple examples here. Now, metal-nonmetal reactions can pretty much be assumed to be redox reactions uh, because we are forming ions. Um, if you take a look at this classic example here, sodium plus chlorine gas yields sodium chloride, uh, we, we've got uh, sodium and chlorine moving into a compound. They're forming ionic bonds and, and therefore this is gonna be a redox reaction. Uh, because they're changing charge. Really, and, and it's a good rule of thumb, anytime you see elements by themselves on either side of the yield sign, it's probably going to be a redox reaction. And there might be other ways to classify it too. But when things are moving into and out of compounds in, in elemental form, it's a, it's a pretty obvious sign of a, of, of a transfer of electrons, hence a redox reaction. And so uh, since sodium starting with elemental form, it starts with a zero charge. It's an elemental form. Uh, same with chlorine. Uh, but afterwards, in the compound sodium chloride, we all know that sodium gets a plus one charge. And so since it went from a zero to a plus one, you get a plus one charge by losing an electron. So sodium's being oxidized. Now again, there's no oxygen in this reaction, but that's irrelevant. Chlorine also in this case is starting with a zero charge, but it, now it's getting a negative one charge because it got sodium's electron. And so in this case, uh, it is being reduced. So the chlorine's being reduced because it's gaining electrons and the sodium is being oxidized because it's losing electrons. Leo's got some uh, dialogue here. No. Well, it looks like Kimbot might like somebody here. 
sassy little line. And so we can look at another example. Uh, the classic is the thermite reaction. And, and again, uh, I'll, I'll try to post a uh, link to the thermite reaction. But if I don't, just go to YouTube and type in thermite reaction. Uh, uh, season one, Breaking Bad, I think, had a, a thermite reaction in it too. So, uh, but the idea of a thermite reaction is a very famous redox reaction. So you can see what happens when things uh, gain or lose electrons. Um, this is also known as a Goldschmidt reaction, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's it's uh, once once this is ignited, it, it when the electrons are transferred, it produces molten iron. And that uh, originally that was used for welding, so you could weld pieces of iron together. Uh, you can do this underwater because once it starts, it won't stop. Um, it's a neat reaction. Uh, very cool demo if you ever get a chance to see it. Uh, so anyway, so in this case, aluminum starting with a zero charge and getting a plus three charge. Once it's in aluminum oxide, we know how to figure out that charge. Uh, so again, it's being oxidized. In this case, iron starts with a plus three charge and goes to a zero charge. So even though it, you don't have to start at zero every time, iron starting with a charge and then being reduced to uh, elemental form in this case. And therefore it's gaining electrons and therefore it's being reduced. Even nonmetals can undergo redox reactions. Uh, it's a little trickier to figure this out because you don't have ions involved, but that's where you get into something called um, uh, oxidation numbers. And again, I don't really do these service in this video, but an oxidation number is, even though these are covalent compounds, if it was an ionic compound, what would be the charge? So for the instance of like carbon dioxide there, um, if, if it was an ionic compound, oxygen would have a negative two charge. And so in this case, oxygen has a negative two oxidation number. So even though electrons aren't completely transferred in a covalent compound, for the sake of oxidation numbers, we pretend they are. And so if the two oxygens each have a negative two oxidation number, then carbon in this case would get a plus four oxidation number. So, and that's how you do it. You figure out the exact same way you would for an ionic compound. Um, in this case, the hydrogens in here would be considered uh, negative one, uh, and then the carbon would be a plus four. Uh, so anyway, so you can just look for, um, really, again, look for elements moving into or out of compounds. Um, but you can always just look for oxygen, too. Pretty much if you've got oxygen in elemental form somewhere, then you've got a, a redox reaction going, too. But again, a, a good rule of thumb is just look for elements moving into or out of compounds. And that's it. That's all we're going to cover today. Uh, again, there's a lot more about redox reactions out there, uh, but I'm not necessarily going to cover them in this set of lessons. Maybe later. AP level, you'll definitely get to this. Anyway, so that's all we plan to do today. Uh, we have one more thing left to do, and that's just talk about some other ways to classify reactions outside the driving forces. Hope you've uh, learned something. Keep practicing your chemistry, and uh, have a great day.